Thank you very much, Chair. His Excellency Anthony Thomas Aquinas Carmona, President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. His Worship, the Mayor of Arima, Alderman Gassan Yusuf. Senator, the Honorable Fazal Karim, Minister of Tertiary Education and Skills Training. The Honorable Winston Peters, Minister of Community Development. Dr. The Honorable Lincoln Douglas, Minister of Arts and Multiculturalism. Dr. The Honorable Roger Samuel, Minister of National Diversity and Social Integration. Ms. Leanna Landers, Deputy High Commissioner of the Australian High Commission. Mr. Richard Blewett, UNDP Resident Representative. Our esteemed Carib Queen, Mrs. Jennifer Kassar of the Santa Rosa First Peoples Community. Chief Lloyd Reed of the village Piacondre Kumbasi, Suriname. Dr. Denise Soyafat Angas, Secretary for Community Development and Culture, Tobago House of Assembly. Permanent Secretaries of the Ministry, different ministries represented here today. Former Members of Parliament. Professor Daya Narayan Singh, President of the University of Trinidad and Tobago. Professor Brinsley Samaru, representatives of agencies under the Ministry of Tertiary Education and the University, members of the business community, representatives of other indigenous communities in Trinidad, Chief Garnet Joseph of the Carib Territory, Dominica, Members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I greet you with the loco, loco no greeting, uh, Sato Kasakabo, and the island Carib Mabrika Mabrika. It is indeed an honor and privilege for me to welcome all of you to this 13th annual celebration of the Day of Recognition of the First Peoples of Trinidad and Tobago. Granted under the name of Amerindian Heritage Day, it is said in mythology that the number 13 is an unlucky one. However, with this number, the Santa Rosa First Peoples Community have struck I will not say gold, but something just under gold. The year 2013 has brought with it a spirit of collaboration. First Peoples are celebrating their day in collaboration with the Ministry of National Diversity and Social Integration, the Ministry of Community Development, and the University of Trinidad and Tobago. The year 2013 marks the 376th anniversary of the historic revolt of the last great Nipoyo chief of Kairi Hayarima against the then Spanish colonizers in the year 13, 1637. Just yesterday, the 13th of October, participants of the Conference of First Peoples passed a resolution calling for October 14th to be proclaimed a national holiday in honor of Chief Hayarima. Another resolution called for Chief Hayarima to be named as Trinidad and Tobago's first national hero and that the Order of Trinidad and Tobago bestowed to him posthumously. Prior to this call, 
The Santa Rosa First Peoples Community, formerly known as the Santa Rosa Carib Community, has advocated for a one-off public holiday on October 14, 2014, to build awareness in the First Peoples Communities and the public in general. Why we call for this holiday. Originally, the Santa Rosa First Peoples community never wanted a public holiday, simply for the reason that we felt we have in Trinidad and Tobago too many holidays. And another one might not benefit our community, as many persons in Trinidad might not be interested in indigenous affairs. They may have an excuse to have a day off, and you know Trinidadians to go by the beach and have a party. So we really didn't want to pursue that. That is why we petitioned in the first instance for a day of recognition, whereby we can have activities to sensitize the rest of the society as to our indigenous past, present, and where we hope to go. The granting of the day of recognition on October 14th was given, as we heard, and here we are celebrating the 13th anniversary. But you know what? Even today in Arima, I am not even talking about the rest of the country, people do not know of that day and what it is about. When we come down from the First People Center, what we know as the Carib Center, to Hayarima to have our rituals and our ceremony, dressed in our traditional clothes, students, other persons will look and they will say, look, a carnival band coming down. In spite of whatever we have been able to do in the, in, in the, in the area of PR, to, uh, to sensitize and to let the rest of the country know it is not reaching our population. And so we changed our position. And while we know that the resolution yesterday called for a public holiday, I know that consideration for a public holiday may take years. And this is why we are calling in the first instance for a one-off, as the Chinese had recently, on the 14th of October, 2014. And why 2014 next year? It is because, as we heard earlier, from some presenter earlier, that we will close the second decade of the world's indigenous people next year, 2014. The first decade was granted by the United Nations and at the end of it, they found that it did not do what it had set out to do. So they declared a second decade. And I asked the question, did that second decade accomplish what it set out to do? I think not. The granting of a one-off public holiday in Trinidad and Tobago will have the impact of letting the whole country stop for that day. And they must know the reason for that holiday. Whether they come to the activities or not, it is an opportunity for all our peoples to become aware. And it will chart the cost for the future. It will be momentous and a source of upliftment to the first peoples of Kairi, Trinidad, and also to the rest of the world. We heard earlier that the United Nations declared that all peoples are equal. And if we are equal, why we do not enjoy that right of having a holiday as the other sectors in our society? I say this because the eyes of the first peoples of the world are on Trinidad and Tobago. The historic find of the human remains and artifacts on the grounds of the Red House of our Parliament and the interest it has sparked nationally and internationally has stirred our people into action. 
As we claim the bones of our ancestors, we call on the relevant authorities to honor the provisions of Article 12 of the Convention on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which states, among other things, that states shall seek to enable the access and or reparation of ceremonial objects and human remains. We were therefore highly gratified when a re resolution coming from yesterday's conference asked that the, con the government give consideration to having the national parliament shifted from its present location of the Red House which is really the site of an old burial ground, a cemetery, since almost full skeletons were unearthed during the ongoing excavations at that site. And some even believe it to be a massacre site. It was further recommended that the Red House be converted into a national archive and art gallery of international standards. This appeal is again supported by the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which states in Article 11 that Indigenous Peoples have the right to practice and revitalize their cultural traditions and customs. This includes the right to maintain, protect, and develop archaeological and historical sites. It is an historical site. In acknowledging the presence and the support of the First Peoples delegations from Belize, Dominica, Guyana, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the Suriname, I must stress the important role they play in assisting us to preserve our culture, that we may hand the legacy to our children. In this respect, the First Peoples call on the relevant government ministries to commence the rewriting of our history here in Trinidad and Tobago. We call on government to re-establish the Amerindian Project Committee under the name of the First Peoples Project Committee, with additional representation from the Ministry of National Diversity and Social Integration, Ministry of Tourism and the Ministry of Community Development, and the National Reparations Committee and also other representatives of other indigenous communities in Trinidad. It is public knowledge that the government of Trinidad and Tobago, through a cabinet decision, has returned 25 acres of land to our community that owned 1,320 acres of land for the establishment of a model First Peoples village. However, there are still serious issues to be dealt with before we can begin the project for which it was intended. This matter was brought to the attention of our Honorable Minister of National Diversity and Social Integration, and we, are, we reiterate our call for a speedy resolution to this matter. And I know that he will do his best to resolve the situation. Ladies and gentlemen, we of the Santa Rosa First Peoples community have set ourselves the task of uniting all descendants of the First Peoples of Trinidad and Tobago. The task we know is an awesome one, but in the spirit and vision of our great chief, Hayarima, we will not be daunted. As like the phoenix, we raise from the dusk of fire and criticism to gather the scattered remains of all our people. With these few words, I wish to sincerely thank all of you for your support and to extend to you best wishes, not only for today, Amerindian First Peoples Heritage Day, but for the rest of the activities that we will have over the remaining days in the week. I thank you, and may the Great Spirit bless and guide you.